As a child, what is your favorite holiday? If you ask any 10-year-old, they will probably tell you it's a cross between Christmas and their birthday. But if you ask the Thompson boys what their favorite holiday is, they would definitely tell you that it's Halloween. You see, on Halloween, it's the one day in the year where you get to express yourselves in any way you want. You can transform yourself into something exquisite. You can be a superhero. You can be a movie star. You can even go to outer space and become an alien. But more important than that, more than anything else, Halloween is a great opportunity to get free candy. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters, good afternoon. I'd like to introduce to you the Thompson boys. Patrick is an independent, strong-willed 10-year-old who likes to play video games. His brother Rick is an adorable five-year-old who has an infectious personality and a smile that can melt your heart. One of their favorite Halloween exercises is that they got to go out and go trick-or-treating for the very first time by themselves. But like all children, they had rules. Their parents told them that they had to stay in the neighborhood, they had to get home at the prescribed time, and most important, they had to stay with each other the entire time. Now Rick's mom did not want him to get lost in the shuffle. So she made sure that that would happen by attaching a little bell to his costume. This way, when Rick walked out through the crowd, everyone could hear where he was at at all times. Well, the moment had come. The Thompson boys were finally going to go on their candy pilgrimage for the very first time without any parental supervision. When they first got out there, everything was going great. Then all of a sudden, Patrick turned to his little brother and goes, Hey, look, you know, if we run, we can get a lot more candy. Well, of course, Rick didn't want to disappoint his little brother, so he ran as fast as his little legs could carry him. At the end of the night, when the boys went home to see what kind of treasures they could, had gathered, Rick noticed that there was a hole in the bottom of his candy bag. Apparently, while they were running throughout the crowd, the bag got caught on something and tore, and all the candy that Rick had collected was now lost somewhere out in the neighborhood. At this point, Rick realized what had happened, and he began to cry. His mother tried to console him, and while she was doing that, she was looking over at Patrick like, please, give me some help. Patrick knew what his mom wanted. He knew that his mom wanted him to give him some of his candy. For any 10-year-old to give up any of their possessions, especially something as a fresh bag of candy, is almost impossible. But Rick loved his little brother, and without hesitation, he gave him half of his candy. At that moment, two important things happened. Rick stopped crying, and his mom recognized that her son had the heart of an angel. We now fast forward 30 years. Both men have grown up and gotten married and own and operate their own businesses. Patrick has a construction company here in California. And Rick moved off to New York where he has become a very successful real estate agent. Now because of the stress and the strain of their jobs, especially for Patrick, He's actually been hospitalized because he has kidney problems. Actually, he needs a kidney transplant. His condition has reached epidemic proportions. If he does not get a kidney transplant immediately, he will die. His name has been placed on the donor list, but the list is long and the odds of getting a kidney this quickly seem against him. In the final hour in late October, as Halloween approached, a mysterious man stepped forward and offered Patrick his own kidney. This was great news to everyone, especially to his brother Rick. He was relieved that Patrick was going to get the gift of life. He told his brother that he would pray for him and that he hoped that the surgery went well. The very next morning, Patrick went into surgery. And in the lobby, his concerned family and friends waited for the doctor to come out and give them the news. After several hours, the doctor walked out to him and he told him that Patrick's surgery was a success. <sighs> a big sigh of relief came over everybody, but he also told them that Patrick needed to rest and that he, they could talk to him later. As Patrick was wheeled back into his uh, hospital room, he realized that he was now sharing the room with a stranger. 
Then it dawned on him that the stranger that he was sharing the room was is the same person that gave him the kidney. At that point, their eyes melt. They met together, and Patrick started to cry profusely. He had seen the man that had given him the gift of life. And what made it even more special is that it was his brother Rick. Mm -hmm. After the crying stopped, and Patrick breathed, he said, Rick, when did you decide to give me your kidney? He says, as a matter of fact, the anniversary is today, 30 years later. Because 30 years ago, you gave me your candy, and that meant the world to me. On that day, even though I was only five years old, I know that you had done something special. That made an impression on Patrick, um, excuse me, and he had always remembered that Rick was something special to him. So Rick gave him something that he needed. He gave it to him the gift of life. That evening, when both men were resting, Patrick reflected on the special times that he had with his brother, on all those great Halloweens that they shared together. You see, for Patrick, Halloween isn't about receiving, it's about giving. Giving to the people that come to your home on that very special day. You see, on that particular Halloween, Patrick received the greatest gift of life from his brother. You see, his brother came to the hospital dressed as something extraordinary. He came dressed as a superhero. You see, if you ask the Thompson boys what their favorite holiday, holiday is, they would definitely tell you that it's Halloween. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Two minutes of silence. 